Rodriguez, pleasure to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me about some of your interesting work with health disparities and how technology can help us kind of close these gaps. So I've been working since I was a medical student trying to understand the different barriers for populations to engage in clinical research and in health delivery policies. Um, my work focuses on preventive cardiology and using technology to try to improve the care, particularly for Hispanic patients who have additional barriers to care, such as language, sometimes socioeconomic access. I think one of the great things about cardiology is that we have great therapies, and they're simple, usually pretty uh, cheap, like aspirin and cholesterol medications, and we need to figure out how to get those medications and therapies out to diverse populations. So in other words, you know, even though a lot of this medication is easily available, it can make a huge difference. We have huge swaths of the population that aren't engaging in these therapies. That's, that's exactly right. And so my research spans diff different areas. So I, I, I do some database research looking at big data and health services with the population at the Veterans Affairs Hospital and here at Stanford. And now we're working uh, with ClickWell Service from Stanford, try to expand that to Hispanic communities through a Hispanic cardiology clinic. So what kind of interventions are you working on specifically? So I think for, particularly for the Hispanic population that may have a barrier with language is to having language concordant providers. Mm -hmm. Also using low-tech uh, interventions such as smart watches and phones that a lot of people, even diverse populations, have to remind people to engage in healthy behavior. And so language concordant providers, you mean a Spanish-speaking patient with a Spanish-speaking doctor, essentially? Yes, and, and I think it's a, that's, that's a great point. It's unrealistic to think that everybody is going to speak every language. There's a lot of languages here in the Bay Area. Uh, so just using, using interpreters when appropriate for all the diverse languages that we have uh, here in the Bay Area. Is there any innovation around that? I know as a doctor, sometimes it just takes so much longer to speak with a patient with an interpreter, and it certainly feels like you're losing something in that friction there. I'll tell you, before I went to medical school, I was actually a medical interpreter, so this is a topic oh, that's wonderful. very dear and near to my heart, and I think there's a skill set that, that providers need to learn to use an interpreter appropriately so it doesn't affect that patient-doctor relationship. So that's something that we should train people in medical school how to do and then sure. continue to assess. Uh, the innovation piece is that now provider uh, interpreters are remote and are easier to access, so from our clinic, we can just see the, the provider, the interpreter on live on the screen, and that kind of facilitates things. So less use of inpatient interpreters. And what do you hope, let's, let's walk 10 years down mm -hmm. the line, what do you hope that your work is going to accomplish? So I hope my, my work does two things. First, I want to identify you know, what are the barriers to getting these diverse populations to receive the highest level of cardiovascular care, particularly for secondary and primary prevention. And once we identify those barriers, to identify specific solutions to engage them better. And I hope that you know, 10 years down the line with the work that I'm doing and my group is doing, we can, we can make sure that everything that we're working on discovering is reached to all the populations diversely in the Bay Area and in, around, around the country. What an admirable goal. Thank you. Thank you so much for <laughs> Thank speaking you so with me much. today.